The C-SPAN networks bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. I'll now recognize myself for, for five minutes. Um, Governor, you've apologized, correct? Correct. Have you, there have been people that have been fired? Correct. Anybody also dismissed or otherwise retired? Yes. Um, did the state of Michigan do something wrong? Yes. Administrator McCarthy, the EPA do, in your mind, did the EPA do anything wrong? I don't know whether we did everything right. That's the challenge that I'm facing. Well, the, 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 the challenge you're facing right now is my question. And the, 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 my question is, did the EPA do anything wrong? I think we could have been, I, I would, would hope that we would have been more aggressive. I would hope that we would have escalated this issue if we could have done absolutely anything to stand on a rooftop and scream about the challenges we're having. Okay, and the so you're, you're we just not, here, here's the fundamental difference. First of all, we have jurisdiction here in Congress on the EPA. I don't have jurisdiction on the governor. I don't have jurisdiction. On, I have jurisdiction to call him up here, and Republicans did call him up here. He volunteered to be here. And we are investigating. This is our third hearing on this topic. But here's yeah. the fundamental difference, and I, and I hope you and I hope everybody understands this. I see responsibility. I see people that are getting fired. I see changes. I see an admission that there was fundamental wrong that happened in the organization. But then when I turn to the EPA, has anybody been fired? That's a no, question. No, sir. Has anybody been dismissed? No, sir. When the EPA Region 5 Administrator there, uh, Susan Hedman, mm -hmm. the day you finally did take decisive action, when you were questioned about that, you said that her act of stepping down was courageous. I did. I'm going to ask you again. Did the EPA do anything wrong? The EPA worked very hard. Let me make one. Okay, no, 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 no. Let me make no, one. No, 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 because no. I have another question the, for you. No, hold on. Okay. Did the, uh, Mark Edwards has testified here twice. He doesn't have a dog in this fight other than he wants good quality health for people and he wants good clean water. And he happens to know the science behind the water. On those two hearings, did, did Mr. Edwards say anything that you think was wrong? Or maybe I, you don't. Or, or inaccurate. Do you think Mr. Edwards said anything that was inaccurate or wrong in those two testimonies? I, I think he was not at all informed about what EPA did. I think he knows nothing about the law, which he readily admits. He knows He doesn't nothing. know how we're supposed to work in the system. He doesn't understand that the problem itself was the responsibility of the states. Oversight was our responsibility. We took that seriously and we conducted it. Does that mean I don't have regrets? Because I'd really like no, to No, that's a whole different here, standard. Everybody but, can say that's, that's cheap. Oh, yeah, we just got regrets. It, it, that, that is, no, that's a cheap. That's cheap. Well, okay? so you have to look at how the law works. And we did Yeah, the, you know what? And it failed. It, you failed. You, have, you said, quote, if there is any, any, uh, anything I could do, if there was a, any that's switch it. I could pull, yeah. you had that under the law, and you didn't do it. No, sir, I did not have that under the law. Yes, you did. If I there is an imminent threat, authority. if I, there is an imminent threat, you can pull that switch. And you finally did in also, January. Administrator, we, you are wrong. There's a two parts to that, sir. You skip the second. What's the second part? You need to have the information to determine an imminent and that, substantial so threat. So why do we even we, need an EPA? Did, if what, you can't do that, sorry, you are I, in those homes. Well, no, let me take it, it I am asking now. the questions. Okay. In fe yes, okay. In February is when you first arrived on the scene, and it wasn't until January of the next year that you actually did something. That's the fundamental problem. Don't look around like you're no, mystified. No. That's what happened. Miguel Del Toro showed up in February. You didn't take action. You didn't. And you could have pulled that we switch. We consistently took action from that point forward. There, is, there are a lot of people in this audience from Flint. Sir. Nobody believes that you took action. You had those levers there. Mark Edwards from Sir. Virginia Tech, bless we, his heart. No, just listen for a second. Okay. 
had the opportunity, they have said things like, we failed to get EPA to take lead and water risks seriously. It's possible, be, another quote of his, and this is possible because the EPA had a, has effectively condoned cheating on the lead and copper rule monitoring since 2006. He read your op-ed that you put out that was one of the most offensive things I could possibly imagine. And he says about you, uh, EPA Administrator Gina McCarthy, that effectively absolved EPA of any wrongdoing or any role in creating the Flint debt disaster. If you want to do the courageous thing, like you said Susan Hedman did, then you too should resign. Nobody's going to believe that you have the opportunity, you had the, the, the presence, you had the authority, you had the backing of the federal government, and you did not act when you had the chance, and if you're going to do the courageous thing, you too should step down. My time has expired. And I that, will right? not close this hearing until uh, Mr. Cummings has uh, equal time to, uh, as well. Uh, but let me go to Administrator McCarthy. Um, the lead and copper rule requires you by law to update it every six years. But you did not do that, correct? It actually requires us to review it every six years to see if it needs you to You don't believe that it's required by, under law to actually uh, update it? There are many laws that... You're just supposed to look at it? No, sir. We were actively looking at this. We are actively looking at this rule. It is very challenging but you said if you want to do a substantive revision to it. Well, if you want to do what the last administration did, just tweak it a bit. It doesn't th th take Don't blame long. the Bush administration. You've been, you've been in office for more than seven years now. So um, you said in your own words that you were going to have this new rule out in 2013, correct? I'm really not aware of that, sir. I, I know that the schedule that I've, I'm aware of is, is a 2017 schedule. You mean the 2018 is what we heard testimony? Well, it, the draft would be out in 2017. That's, wh that's what See, I'm th aware this of. Is, this time. is what's so frustrating. You have somebody like an expert like Mark Edwards come and tell us mm -hmm. there's so many ways around this and there's so much confusion. Do you believe there's any confusion about the lead and copper rule? Uh, I do believe that it can be strengthened, and I do the, believe there no, are no, weaknesses. No, 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 that's not what you asked, strengthened. I'm asking if you think there's any, any confusion. Well, it, it, it's, I believe there probably is confusion. I, I, I'm not the one on the receiving end of it, but we work to clarify that whenever anyone has You're the has administrator. It. What do you mean you're not on the receiving well, end? Well, I meant because we manage the program. The states do the implementation, and they do the, the enforcement. And in this case, we were very clear to them what their responsibility was under the existing law. So and, while and I understand we should strengthen the law, I agree. So when, when, we when, had what we needed in place to prevent this from happening. Really? But then why did it happen? Because the state didn't implement and enforce appropriately. So you sent Miguel del Toro in February 2015 out to go uh, do the testing. That wasn't for a lead and copper rule testing. That was a testing for an individual in their home, which ended up being three houses where there was a localized problem. I did not have information until July 21st that there was a systemic problem with that system. Yet, as soon as we knew there was any problem in three houses, we told them to start doing no, you didn't. the, the no, you proper didn't. treatment. You, no, I'm because sorry, we did. But the timeline is such that Miguel del Toro goes, does the testing. Yes. The report gets leaked, which he feels he was reprimanded for. That it gets re released. The mayor calls the EPA, Susan Hedman, and says, is this report true? Should I be worried? The answer is no, you have nothing to worry about. And the mayor went on television, we played it before this committee, and says it's safe to drink the water. Sir, I think I've, I, I tried to explain that Susan did not dismiss the substance of the report. She indicated that it was interim, the data hadn't been quality controlled, and it wasn't leaked, it was actually sent out. It was in the newspapers. That is I mean, not, so the I know it, it, it was in the newspaper and the ACL was pushing on it and the person's home that she came to, it, it was out there. And when, so when why, we why, in April, but we why do the testing yep. if you're just going to simply blame the state? I mean, there is no doubt and the governor's admitted that the people and the information that were happening from the career bureaucrats at the Department of Environmental Quality got it wrong. But let me read to you this. This is, uh, you said they did everything that you immediately wanted to have everything done on, on uh, the corrosion control, correct? I said in, on, by starting April 24th, 
We, when we realized that they were not doing corrosion control, we told them under the current law they should do it. Okay, well, I'm going to enter into the record a email. Who's uh, Jennifer Crooks? Uh, she is one of our staff people, um, our, our managers in the water program in the region. Is she competent? As far as I know. I don't know her personally. Okay, well, on July 1st, she sends, and there are a lot of DEQ personnel on here, and I'm going to read part of what she says. You just said that, they, that you told them to introduce the corrosion control in April. Mm -hmm. This is what she wrote to the Department of Environmental Quality. The idea to ask Flint to simply add phosphate may be premature. There are many other issues and factors that must be taken into account which would require a comprehensive look at the water quality and the system before any treatment recommendations can and should be made. Let me, then let me explain that, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Because that actual advice came from Miguel. Because when I say you need to do treatment, it does not mean that I have a switch to turn on. He indicated that the agency didn't have the full water quality data. That's when we demanded and offered and begged to be on their technical advisory. You committee. were. This was a so conference. It was a summary of the conference call between DEQ and the EPA. No, there was a Flint technical uh, what do you mean, advisory no, they, committee. I'm sorry. Look, let me, the public can look at this for themselves. Well, without okay, but but it was not as easy as flipping a switch. It did not mean that didn't. It, they didn't need to require to do it. The question was whether we were going to be premature in how best to get no. that done. No, what you did is you came here and you blamed solely the state. And I'm here to tell you, the state has a big part of this blame. I'm not trying to excuse them whatsoever. But you're trying to excuse everything from the EPA saying you told them to put phosphates in the water and they didn't. Sir, I'm not trying the to document, no, I'm trying to get wait till I'm done asking the you the question. The documentation says that you actually had a conference call from the EPA telling the EQ to not do it yet. No, we were telling them that, that, it, that they had to do corrosion control. The method and treatment depended on experts to tell them how to do it. We offered that consistently from what March tell on, and they actually never even took us up on it till September. That's not true. Well, I'm going to enter the record. We entered this before, November 3rd. Who is Peter Gravat? He is the, uh, uh, the manager of our drinking water office and headquarters. Yeah, he's, a, he's the Washington, D.C. expert. Here's what he wrote. Okay, this is November 3rd. It appears, it appears there are different possible interpretations of the lead and copper rule, copper rule with respect to how the rules optimal, optimal corrosion control treatment procedures apply to this situation, which may have led to some uncertainty with respect to the Flint wetter system. So here you have a city who's begging for help. They know they're in trouble, okay? They're asking for that help. And I've got email after email from the Environmental Protection Agency saying, you know what, maybe you should hold off because we're not sure. Maybe there is confusion under the lead and copper rule. Maybe we are supposed to do six months of testing. I'm not excusing them at all, but you need to take some responsibility because you screwed up and you messed up 100,000 people's lives. 100,000 of them. 10,000 of those people are six years old and younger. And you take no responsibility. You don't think you did anything wrong. Right? You don't think there's anybody did anything wrong. I already indicated that we could have worked more aggressively. Yeah. I wish we had. Can I explain the, the memo? Would you like me to? I want you to have an appreciation and an understanding of why the DEQ people are confused by the direction from the Envi Department of Environmental Quality, from, was, from the EPA. There was no confusing signal sent from the agency. What were they supposed to do? Of time. Would, they, should they have put the phosphates in the water, yes or no? Not dumping it in without connecting with the experts, and they did not have the expert voice at the table because they refused to let us to the table. They were at the table. It comes from that the EPA. The sir, she I'm starts sorry. the email. That is not the task force we're talking okay. about to provide technical expertise. Okay, let's go through the list. Uh, Leanne Smith, Richard Benzie, Chris Phillip, Carrie Monosmith, Dana, uh, I'm going to pronounce, I'm going to mispronounce their last name. It's okay. Going through sir, this, hold on. I don't know those individuals, so. Yeah, they all work for you. And the EPA, I'll, I'll work for this here's thing. what it says, here's what it says, I'm sorry, DEQ, but from the EPA, yes. thank you, Governor. Governor knows who works for him. Uh, here's it. Below are my draft notes from our call last week. Thank you all for participating. I apologize, first apology I had seen, for the delay in getting out this draft for you to all review. And it says, don't simply add the phosphates. Can you, I only want you to 
acknowledges that there's a, there should be because some. Because it could have created more damage than it cured. Exactly. Water systems are exactly. difficult and deserve technical experts, which they did not have available. We did. They wouldn't let them at the table. They were at the table. They were in the same that is conversation. Not the table. That is that is a, a semi-annual call we have with the department where we share information. If you look through the record, we consistently said we have national experts. We want to help. We had worked behind the scenes to figure out how we could do that. We just never got invited, nor were we accepted at the table at that point. Yeah, I'm going to go through my last point, and then we'll get to, to Mr. Clay here. You said you didn't have the authority to do, I want to read to you part of the law here. Okay? This is section 1431, part D. Part D, section 1431 of the emergency powers within the Safe Drinking Water Act. It says, the administrator, that would be you, yes. upon receipt of information that a contaminant which is present in or likely to enter a public water system, and I'm skipping ahead because it qualifies for terrorist attacks and all those types of things, which may present an imminent and substantial endangerment to the health of persons, and that appropriate state and local authorities have not acted to protect the health of such persons, may take such actions as he may deem necessary in order to protect the health of such persons. So if they weren't doing what you wanted them to do, why didn't you take action you know, earlier? Surprise, Mr. Chairman, the second part is about states' rights. And what we have to do. What do you mean the second there, part? There is a two part process to us actually issuing a 1431. The second is we need to make sure that the states are already taking appropriate action. That's what's so infuriating. So when did about. you know that they didn't do it? We knew July 21st that there was a systemic problem. The state agreed the next day, and then all they did was slow walk it. That's why we had to, to do it the way we did. I, I wished we had gone further. I wish we had gone farther. I wish we had yelled from the treetops. But there is no way that my agency created this problem or there was ambiguity in the existing law that wouldn't have done the same thing that the governor said, which was let them know to use your common sense, don't put people at risk, just because we couldn't figure out that in the life of us, in our guidance, we never thought that anybody would go from a treated system to an untreated system and not treat it. I didn't think we ever had to say that, because I never thought anyone would. That's where we are today. You can't have it both ways. You can't have people on the ground testing it, people like Miguel Del Toro doing those types of tests, that was sending up the warning flags. No, nope, sending up the warning flags, and then not. Okay, I'm going to well past my time. We'll recognize the gentleman from Missouri. Right, Mr. Thank Clay you. Thank you.